from Merriam-Webster, a goon is a person who is hired to terrorize or eliminate opponents. Well, that sounds partially accurate, but I didn't see anything in there about scoring hat tricks. What's up, Caps fans? Ooh, baby, Tom Wilson. Whew! Uh, you will remember that he signed a contract extension this offseason. Uh, he is all ours for this season, plus at least seven more after this season. Uh, and I thank the hockey gods for that every single day because goddamn, this guy is an absolute beast in every sense of the word. First period, the Caps, they are on the second half of a back-to-back -back after a very hard-fought win over the Kings in Los Angeles yesterday night. Uh, but if the Caps are tired, you wouldn't know it here by the way that they start this game um, with big Anthony Mantha driving to the net early in this one once again. Um, he's been doing that a lot lately, driving the net uh, and scoring goals as well. Um, so he drives to the net here again early on in this game for a very nice goal. Um, he essentially outweighed Anaheim Ducks netminder John Gibson, pulling him out of his net by bringing the puck all the way across the crease. Uh, and then once he had Gibson out of position, he slips the puck past him into the empty cage. A hell of an angle that Mantha had to hit with that shot too to actually get it into the net there. Um, so very impressive stuff by him. And it is one to nothing for the Capitals. Um, the goal is unassisted for Mantha as he had actually stolen the puck himself over along the boards in the Ducks end. Um, so, you know, just doing everything right there for Anthony Mantha. Um, and then, like I said, he just took it to the net from there. So great goal, great stuff by Mantha. He's been amazing. Like I am happy to eat my words here on Anthony Mantha. If he is going to play like this, um, I did not like the player that he has been for us for the last few seasons at all. Um, you know, I think that's even like even saying it like that, that's an understatement. I hated the player that he has been for us for the last few seasons. Um, he had not been at all what we had envisioned when we traded for him, uh, but he is making up for it right now somewhat. You know, he has to keep it going, obviously, but if he continues this, if he keeps this up, then like I said, I am happy to eat my words, happy to have him around, happy to have him on the team. Um, for the rest of this season. There is no need to trade him if he's playing like he is right now. But then, after the nice goal by Anthony Mantha, the lead was unfortunately short-lived um, because Darcy Kemper, he gives it right back on the Ducks' second shot on net of the hockey game. Um, and so it is tied up at one. Um, more on Darcy Kemper later, who was, you know, spitting out rebounds as if he's a fucking Pez dispenser in this one. Then, it's a good penalty kill by the Washington Capitals to keep it 1-1, um, but about a minute after the penalty had expired, it's Darcy Kemper giving up another one, and it's 2-1 Ducks. So, two goals here on only seven shots for the Anaheim Ducks. Um, you know, we have talked about it a million times here during these post-game shows and also during the podcast uh, but Darcy Kemper's save percentage early on in games is a huge problem. Um, I don't know how anyone can say that it's not. Like, he is always giving up a couple of early goals against, usually in the first five or at, le at least in the first ten uh, minutes of games. Um, you know, he seems to have always given up at least two goals before the opposition gets to even 10 shots on net, right? Um, and I mean, like, what can you say? Like, it is becoming like clockwork at this point and the Caps are always chasing in games in which he's the starter because of it. Um, and, you know, that's a big reason why their win-loss record is significantly worse with him in the net. It just is, that's a fact. Um, you know, when you compare it to either of, you know, Charlie Lindgren or even Hunter Shepard um, coming up and playing a few games. Like, our record with Darcy Kemper, I'm getting heated talking about this because I hate blaming the goalies. I'm a goalie. I've told you guys that before. I hate blaming the goalies. Um, but their win-loss record for the Caps, uh, it is significantly worse with Darcy Kemper, who's supposed to be your starter, supposed to be your number one goaltender, 
their win-loss record is significantly worse with him in the net as compared, like I said, to either of Charlie Lindgren or Hunter Shepard. Um, and it's because like they're always fucking down in the games where Kemper is in the net, unfortunately, because he lets in always, always um, either the first shot or the second shot. And then he's always letting in a second goal before, like I said, the opposition even gets to 10 shots on net. And like I said, I don't want to have to come on here and say this. I really don't. Um, but I mean, these are facts, right? So it has to be talked about. Like, I mean, I like Darcy Kemper. I like him. I think he's a good guy off of the ice. Um, I think he's been a very good goalie in the past. Um, but the truth is like, and especially with the way that Charlie Lindgren is playing, right? That's a big factor as well. Um, Kemper, you know, he either needs to be a whole lot better or he needs to be okay with parking his ass on the bench, right? Like, otherwise there's, what are we going to do? You know, like you either have to play better or you have to, like I said, park it on the bench and be okay with that. Whether you were projected to be the, the number one goaltender or not. Um, otherwise there is a one-way ticket to Edmonton probably that awaits you. Okay. Back to the game. Jeez. Why do you guys let me get off track like that? Nicholas Abe Kubel, he draws a penalty with some elusiveness with the puck. Nice work by NAK there. Uh, but unfortunately, the power play is over practically before it even begins um, as the Caps. They get called for another penalty. But the Caps, they finish the penalty kill and Tom Wilson out of the penalty box. Uh, he hustles to get himself the breakaway. And he scores a nice backhand deke by Big Tom in his 700th NHL game, beats John Gibson, and it is a 2-2 game, all tied up for the Caps. That goal was unassisted for Wilson as well, um, as he had actually come out of the penalty box. He hustled to get back into the cap zone to help his teammates defend, and he ended up making the nice defensive play himself there, stealing the puck off of the Ducks player and springing himself on the breakaway, uh, as you just are not going to catch Tom Wilson once he gets those big legs churning. He's got very underrated speed. I've been saying that forever. He can really turn on the Jets, uh, and he did exactly that here creating the turnover all the way back in his own defensive end, like I said, and then taking flight for the breakaway goal. So great stuff from Tom there, as it so often is. Then the Caps draw penalty, and quickly into this power play here, they strike, finally, um, on the power play. Alex Ovechkin with a booming one-timer that deflects to Tom Wilson parked in front of the net. He slams it home. Back-to-back -back goals for talentless goon Tom Wilson, uh, and it is three to two for the Capitals. The primary assist was by Alex Ovechkin. The secondary assist was by John Carlson. And oh, by the way, that was the Capitals' first power play goal in over a full calendar month. Are you guys ready for these stats? It is a span which included, I believe, it was a dozen games and 32 power play opportunities that they went without a goal. So that has got to feel extra fucking good for the guys right there to get that one on the power play um, specifically, as that is just a huge monkey off of everyone's backs. Then quickly, the Caps would strike again. Uh, this one at even strength, Erasmus Sandin walks the blue line beautifully, getting the shot through and it's tipped perfectly by Nick Dowd and beats John Gibson uh, and it's four to two for the Capitals. Assists on that one by Rasmus Sandin and Nicholas Abe Kubel. So that's three goals in a span of about three minutes for the Washington Capitals. And that takes it from being a two to one deficit to a four to two lead. That is huge. Um, you know, a much better spot to be in as you head into the first intermission here. The second period was very uneventful, unless your name is Darcy Kemper. Um, as the Ducks spent about half of the period on the power play, and as a result, they outshot the Caps 15 to 4 in the period. Now, some of these penalties, okay, you could say weren't very deserved, but some certainly were deserved. Um, take Evgeny Kuznetsov, for example, here. Um, he gets a penalty call that he very much deserves as he was being lazy on the back check, you know, didn't want to move his feet. And so he just kind of like sticks his stick just lazily there into the midsection of the duck skater. 
And yep, like that is going to be a penalty every single time, Kuzi. You've been in the league for a minute. You should know that. The Caps, they would kill that one off. And in fact, they would kill them all off. Um, so it remains a 4-2 to lead for the Caps heading into the third. Third period. My favorite part of this period was probably 22-year-old Connor McMichael getting sent to the penalty box um, for starting a scrum with Radko Gudis of all people. And the reason why I love this so much, if it isn't obvious, um, is because Radko Gudis is obviously a very tough man. Um, you know, he's got a long-standing reputation in the league for being one of the toughest guys in the league. Uh, and yet, Connor McMichael, he shows here that he is afraid of absolutely no one. Um, and he's standing up for his teammate here, who Gudis had taken a shot at. Uh, I believe it was 21-year-old rookie Hendrix Lapierre, actually, who Gudis had taken the shot at. So, you know, that's cool. Um, Bush League stuff by Radko there. But anyways, uh, McMichael, he is standing up for his teammate. And, you know, he's like, no, actually, fuck you. Like, I'm not afraid of you. Um, I'm not afraid of anyone. So that is awesome to see from the 22-year-old. I absolutely love it. That's a penalty that you will take every single time because it ingrains in guys that we are going to stick up for each other here no matter what. We're not backing down. And by the way, the Caps have an absolutely massive roster and obviously still have Tom Wilson on that absolutely massive roster as well. Um, so I don't think they're going to have any problems standing up to anyone anytime in the foreseeable future. Uh, but still, all of this is just to point out that 22-year-old Connor McMichael um, he's got that dog in him, man, and I absolutely love it. There were some goals to speak of in the third period, too. Um, namely, Darcy Kemper getting embarrassed by a fourth liner going between the legs to beat him uh, for his first fucking goal of the season, too. Um, and, like, I could understand it when Zach Benson did it to Darcy Kemper a few games ago. Um, because that's Zach Benson, and he is obviously an extremely skilled young forward who's doing that move to perfection for TikTok and Instagram all the time. Um, but to let Brock fucking McGinn pull that move on you and to let him score with it, like, that is just embarrassing, man. I don't know. It's embarrassing. Um, I don't know how you let that happen. Brock fucking McGinn out here looking like a Harlem Globetrotter on Darcy Kemper's watch. That's great. Um, Caps lead is cut to 4-3. But thankfully, we have Tom Hattrick Wilson to the rescue once again, restoring the two-goal lead with, what's that? A second power play goal for the Washington Capitals in the same game? In this economy? What sorcery is this? Uh, but nah, great goal, um, you know, persistence and crashing the net. Um, Tom Wilson gets rewarded with his first career hat trick, like I said, um, in his 700th NHL game as well. Amazing stuff. I believe they said he is only the second player in NHL history to record a hat trick in his 700th career NHL game. Um, that's amazing. And assists on that one, uh, the primary assist was again by Alex Ovechkin and the secondary assist was again by John Carlson. So two point nights for each of those guys as well. And it is five to three for your Washington Capitals. And as it turns out, the insurance marker is rather important when you have Darcy Kemper in net these days, uh, as he would completely fumble a puck with about 30 seconds left in the game here, leaving a juicy rebound sitting there and also kind of pushing the puck back into his own net as well. Like he kind of almost scored that goal for the Ducks there. Um, watching it again here, it's just ridiculous. But um, anyways, so with 28 seconds left on the clock, it is now a 5-4 hockey game. But that is as close as the Ducks would get uh, as the Caps would finish off the game and the regulation win uh, by doing some great work along the boards, essentially just killing the puck along the boards and completely killing the rest of the clock without giving the Ducks so much as a sniff at their net. Um, you could tell that the five skaters on the ice for the Caps there had no intention of letting that puck get anywhere near netminder Darcy Kemper in those final seconds there uh, after how that fourth duck goal had gone in. Um, so great work from the Caps defenders there to keep that puck away from their net and away from their goaltender. And it's another regulation win and another two standings points in the bank.
All right, Caps fans, that is it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to hit that like button down below uh, and click on that subscribe button too if you haven't already done so. Until next time, babes, and as always, let's go Caps.